All right then, gang. So the first thing I'd like to talk about in PHP is the idea of variables. Now, variables are used to store bits of information or values or data, which we can then recall and use later on in the program. For example, I could have a variable to store a user's email address, and then I could call upon that variable later on if I want to output it to the screen, okay? So how do we create these variables? Well, first of all, we say dollar sign. That says to PHP, look, I'm going to create a variable. Then we give the variable a name. So if I wanted to store someone's age, I could call it age, for example. Or if I want to store their name, I could call it name. Now, there are some rules when giving these variables names, and they are very simple. First of all, the variables have to start with either a letter or an underscore. So an N or a P or an underscore or even a capital N. But they can't start with numbers and they can't start with special characters. So after the first letter, you can use a combination of any letter, uppercase or lower, underscores and numbers. But you can't ever use special characters like the at sign. So this would be a valid variable name, something like that. Yet yeah, it's silly and I wouldn't ever call a variable that name, but that would be valid. OK, now also you might hear something called camel case variable naming. Now, that basically means that if you have a variable which has two words, for example, first name, it's formatted like this, first name. And the first letter of the second word is capital. This is camel case. Now, you don't have to name them this way. You can name them however you like. For example, you could choose to do an underscore to separate those instead. That's entirely up to you. But these are just some different conventions for naming variables. Anyway, I'm going to name mine simply name. And I'm going to set that equal to a string, which is Yoshi. Now, We've briefly talked about strings. We've said that they are strings of characters or numbers or special characters like at symbols. It doesn't matter contained within these quotes. They could be used to store names like this or a sentence or a paragraph or an email, anything like that. Now, we're going to delve into strings into greater detail in the next couple of tutorials. But for now, just know that our strings are characters inside either single quotes or double quotes. So we could just as easily do this instead and then Yoshi. OK, now there is a difference between single quotes and double quotes, and we'll talk about that later on. But for now, it really doesn't matter. We can use single or double. So anyway, we're storing this string now in this name variable. Now, if I wanted to access it, I could just say later on echo and then the variable, which is dollar sign name. OK, so that is going to take this value, which is stored in the variable and echo it to the screen. So let's save that and view this in a browser. I'm going to refresh and we see Yoshi right there. We see this because that's in the HTML template hard coded. But either way, we're now taking this variable and we're echoing it to the screen. We can also output this variable inside the HTML template. So, for example, if I come down here and do a div inside, I could say PHP to do my PHP tags. I always have to do that if I'm writing PHP and we could echo the name right here instead. So if I save this and refresh, now we see the name down here in the HTML template. Pretty cool, right? OK, so let's do a different variable. I'm going to do age and set that equal to this time, not a string, but an integer. So if I say 30. Notice, first of all, they're a different color, right? And that's because it's recognizing this as a different data type. This is an integer. This is a string. Now, we don't have to store integers or numbers inside quotes. They're a different data type. We don't need to do that. Now, there's many different types of data type, and we're going to talk about them all as we go through this course. But know that this is now a string and this is a number. Either way, we can still access this number later on in exactly the same way. If I say div and then PHP and echo the age this time, it's going to do pretty much the same thing. It's going to take that value and output it to the screen over here. 30. All right. So that's variables in a nutshell. Now, we can override variables. So, for example, if I wanted to override this name later on in the program, I could say dollar sign name is now equal to Mario. OK, so save that. And when we come to output it down here, what do you think it will be? Well, it should be Mario because we've overridden this thing. We initially set it to Yoshi, then we set the age, then we're overriding the name again. By the time we get down here, because it runs from top to bottom, then the name is now Mario. Make sense? OK, cool. 
Now, I'm just going to comment a couple of things out. And by the way, this is how we do comments in PHP. Uh, just two little forward slashes. You could also use a pound sign that uh, comments it out as well. But I tend to use forward slash. I'm going to comment out this stuff as well. And when something's commented out, it's not ran. OK, so the PHP is still there for your kind of memory, if you like, for your comments. But when the PHP file is run on the server, then obviously anything commented out is not run. OK, so now I'd like to talk about constants because we can override this. Right. So it's not constant. Now, say you didn't want that to happen. Say you wanted to define some kind of variable and you wanted it to remain as that value indefinitely. You don't want it to be overridden. Well, in that case, you could define a different type of variable called a constant. And the way we do that is by using a function called define. Now, I know we've not talked about functions, but essentially we just use the define keyword, then parentheses to invoke this function. And we will talk about functions later on more. And then we set the variable name or the constant name. And it's common practice to do this in capitals because then we know it's a constant later on when we use it. And then we set the value of that constant. So I'm going to set this to Yoshi. OK, now, if we want to access this later on, we can do. We can just output the name here. But this time we don't use dollar sign because we didn't up here anywhere. Um, we use caps because that's how we defined it. And this is how we know later on that this is actually a constant because it looks totally different from this. Right. So now we should output Yoshi to the screen. If we refresh, we can see Yoshi. And now this time, if I try to override this, if I do this again down here, so define name and set this to Mario, then we should get an error. And this shouldn't work because this is a constant and we're not allowed to override constants. Right. So it's saying here that constant name is already defined. Now, even if we try to override it this way and we say name equals Mario, something like that, then it's still not going to work. If we refresh, we can see we get a syntax error now. So that's not allowed. OK. So that's how we create variables, how we store data in them. And that's also how we can create constants as well if we don't want them to be overridden.